No, that's not it. An article that we were talking about this morning because we wanted mm. to talk to you about it. Uh, not mm. I feel like it was the Telegraph. I feel like it was in the Telegraph. Um, okay. Anyway, here he is. How are you all? I'm going to have to jump up in a minute because I've got some pasta on the go for Kiki. Hello. How are you all? Isn't it a gorgeous day? It didn't start out like this, but it's it's really beautiful now. How isn't did it, it start? It, looked, it was a bit grey this morning. Was it? It didn't have a lot of promise. Mm. Um, how are you all? What are you all up to? Let me pull you all up. Uh, we're on 4G, so do let us know if, uh, because as you probably heard from Nadia's Instagram, has anyone from Nadia's Instagram, give us a wave and we'll say hello. Yeah, give us a wave if, you've, if this is your very first time with us. Hello, Sean. And so we can shout out your name. Nat, Nat Barnes, hello. Lucy Williams. Patrick Salt, I'm assuming you're being ironic there about Malignant. <laughs> it's got terrible reviews, isn't it? Um, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just saying hello. Sorry. Good morning, no, 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 Annie Brown, that. Helen Ellis. Uh, Maureen Gannon, Beatrice Hooper. You've just done a big clean of the uni kitchen. Does it feel good? Wow. Does that feel good when you have a bit? I, I, we were just I've talking about uni kitchens. Oh, Trill. There you go. Hello from Trill. Hello, Trill. Nice to see you. Uni kitchen, shared digs and kitchens. What a nightmare. Because we used to, when I was at college and we were in our first house for the second year, we, everyone put labels on their stuff in the fridge. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and you have to. Living in houses and doing no that. Money, yeah. Oh, look, Miss Retallick. There's a hello, Mark. Mark Phillips. Hello. Uh, we love we love more men here because it, yeah. it keeps me company. Tell your male friends. Tell your male to friends to, to come and join us. Uh, but they're probably busy watching Tottenham lose three 0 to Crystal Palace, which has really annoyed me because Tottenham were doing so well. Why have you suddenly started talking about football when because you never talk about swapsies? Football? If anyone has, if anyone hasn't got this, can we do swapsies? Do you remember doing that? Any boys here? Girls, were girls ever into cards and stickers like boys? Were you ever into cards and stickers at uh, school? I don't know. What did you collect? That's a good topic. What did you collect at school? We've done that loads of Have we? I don't remember ever doing it. I don't remember. Oh, yes, we did. We talked about rubbers, didn't we? Rubbers. <laughs> Ella, Rita, anyone, any girls here who collected football stickers like that? Figurini Panini. It's my, first, it's my first double. You used to go into school with a little pack as boys. You'd be like, what doubles have you got? And you got doubles. And you got, have you got a badge? And the badges were always shiny. Oh. How tell, lovely. You can tell when she's just tolerating, can't you? WWF wrestling stickers. Now, you might not believe this, but I used to love wrestling. Who was your favourite? I used to like Big Daddy and Haystack. Pardon? Big Daddy and Haystack. Oh, Giant Haystacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good, wasn't he? I used to collect marbles. Oh, I used to collect marbles and I collected stamps for a while, but it was too boring. Do you remember the girls collected go go's? Yeah. Yeah. I collected Care Bear Vicky stickers. Edwards Sarah please... Doolally. Ah, Care Bear. I love Care Bears. Sarah Doolally. Vicky Edward says, please say hello as I'm cycling and need the motivation in the garage so I'm safe. Are you? Come on, Vicky Edwards. Come on, Come on, on love. Come on. Come get on your bike. Get your, hat, get your feet on the Come pedals. On. And just keep going. Come on. Speed yeah. it up. Speed it up. Just do a minute. Do 20 seconds of faster than you've ever done before in your life. Get out of breath. Wow, the work that you've done for your Cycle heart. Cycle harder than your Come legs on, will Edwards. take you. Come on, Vicky Edwards. Come on. There we go. Hope that helped. I hope you've got the door open so you just haven't got the smell of the garage. I hate smells of garage. I could never work out in a garage because I hate the smell. I've demotivated you again now. Keep going, Vicky. No, Edwards. keep going. I, I love a garage. I always wanted a garage growing up. So many we, things this, happen in garage. This was a garage. Garages. This house so was a garage. So much used to kind of happen in garages. Oh, no, it wasn't. I what am I talking about? Sorry. I always thought garage band was why it was because they happened in a garage. Nicola Higgins says the only thing I collect is problems. <laughs> Feeling a bit low today, Nicola. Nicola we'll cheer you up. Sending a big, big hug there, darling. Oh, hang on. Laura has got a giant haystack story. Giant has haystack held me when I was a baby. He was at a caravan site where we were on holiday. Laura S, was he? Did he? <laughs> Have oh you got a photo, Laura S? That's so funny. Apparently, they were huge softies, weren't they? Yeah. Big Daddy. And, yeah. But whenever Big I Daddy was big fighting Daddy giant haystacks. so much. They bounce off each oh, other. Oh, I loved it. I mean, I used to get really excited about those matches. Yeah, I got really disappointed when I discovered it was all theatre. You always say that. We don't what? need to keep reminding gonna... ourselves. Let's just lose ourselves. Is there anything ourselves. I'm going to say that you're not going to remind Let me us... I've said before? Let's just lose ourselves in the world of wrestling. We're just going, oh, very disappointed we found out it's all theatre. We don't know it's all theatre. Some of it is. 
Yeah, but the problem for me is that if you can't, and this is my, me a little bit on the spectrum here, if you can't distinguish what's theatre and what's real, how can you in any way judge the fight? God, it was just fun, Mark. <laughs> That's where I started watching it, Claire, with my grandparents. Claire so did I, yeah. So did I. Yeah, I used to love watching it with Grandad. Smelly rubbers. Same to you, Emma Carter. Oh, I love smelly rubbers. <laughs> I love smelly rubbers. You wanted to eat them, didn't you? Mm. Strawberries and cream. Do you remember that? So I'm just going to check my pasta. I'll be back in one sec. Yeah, she's got to see the doctor about that. <laughs> um, Diane Blake, we put everything in our garage except our cars. It's so true. That's so true. Hazel Marbot, my first girlfriend loved Care Bears. She collected Care Bears, and when she looked at them, she'd go, <coughs> she also liked pugs. Uh, Janine Amory, I collected rubbers too. I used to collect beer mats, Marcia Toms. I think I did that for a while. I collected wine, I should have known the writing was on the wall, really. I used to collect wine bottles. When my mum was in pubs, mum, I don't know if you remember, the pub down in Holland Park. Wine bottles? Well, yeah, no, and I'd write, basically, because I'd play outside the pub in amongst all the bottles of beer and bottles of wine, and then I'd take one home. And that happened over a period of time. And then my mum even remembers walking into my bedroom, I must have been only nine, and said, your room stinks of wine. And therein was a prophetic moment. Wow. Isn't, wasn't there? How weird is that? Why did you collect them? Because I like collecting things. Oh. Yeah, I like the bottles, I like the shape. I mean, back then, back then, back then, back then, they weren't mass produced, were they? Katie Johnston, Chi Chi's good, but Toffee's the one who's in a jumpsuit and with a donut of humiliation on her head. Uh, oh my God, tea cards. Do you remember collecting cards from the PG tips? Yeah, and you'd my get, dad always used to collect them. I, and they were lovely things actually, because yeah. you would get a wall chart, wouldn't you? And they'd have the gaps, and they'd be things like birds, or they'd be things like cars. Um, and I used to love that. And what happened to the days of having nice things in, like cereal? Do you remember in cereal, you'd get cards and stuff like that? I know, I know we've talked I about that too. I it's all wastage now, paper, plastic. It's not economically viable. Uh, Laura S, I got back from my holidays in the Scottish borders yesterday. Two weeks in our Tora caravan. Oh, that must have been lovely. Oh, Loved it. Yeah. The scenery is beautiful. The Scottish borders. Is the, are the Scottish borders literally like the borders between Scotland and England? Because the, I, 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 the borders. The borders. I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, trolls with the different colour fluffy hair, Della Nixon. Maggie used to collect those. It's such a shame that the word has such different connotations now, but I they were I lovely. Still have my trolls. I think you still have them. Hey! Uh, can the Popcorn junkie Junkies post about all of the Paul Thomas Anderson news about licorice pizza from last week, from title reveal to Philip Seymour Hoffman's... Oh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, drove in my own car for the first time yesterday. Amy May, how was it? Drove in your own car. Oh, we know a friend, a friend of uh, Maddie's has just got her car. Uh, first car. Beatrice Hooper watched the Firework Championships in Blackpool last night. Firework Championships? Oh my God, you're joking. I'd love that. That's fascinating. Well, how I didn't know there was such a thing. How do you win? Is it judged like Strictly? They're so hard to photograph though, fireworks, aren't they? Yeah, really disappointing. You've got to film them. Really. You know, photo. I hated. Do you remember the days when people would show you David photographs? David Shields, obviously Candyman today, any good. Oh, David We've Shields. We've got a review up here on Don't the channel. Don't watch our review because it is a spoiler review, but come and watch it afterwards. I think it's one of the richest, crispest, most stylish, and most important horror films in recent years. The whole family came back, they all loved it. It's really, really good. And it's much more than just a horror film. So enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, I Don't Like Fireworks, says Anita Amor. Oh, I love them. Yeah. So pretty. There's a lot of build-up and a little bit of bang. So tell me about Piers. Oh, yes. You want to First get... of all, I think we really missed the event of a lifetime yesterday because we didn't watch this match between... Um, what's her name? Radu... Radu... Radicanu. Is it Radicanu? Yeah. Radicanu. Radu... How do you pronounce it phonetically? I have to confess, I mean, I'm not an... In... I've lost in... I used to be an enormous tennis fan, but I've lost interest in recent years. It just doesn't... But, but uh, I mean, I was listening... We were both listening to radio this morning. Radicano. Andrew Castle and Sue... What's her name? Barker. Uh, Barker. I mean, and they said that it is number one <clears throat> right at the top of the leaderboard of sporting events in British history. Well... Because I don't know enough about tennis, but this is just... Big oh, well, I mean, the one thing I do know it? is that when, the reason I lost interest in tennis was because we were all spending our entire lives waiting for an English person to win anything vaguely important. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, um, what's his face came along? What's his name? The Scottish boy. 
Um, um, what's his name? God, what what's the Scottish Jesus tennis Christ. player? Oh my God, Someone. don't Mark, I'm oh, frightened. This is awful. No, no, Adam. Something no. Hardy? No, something. What's his name? Murray, Andy he's Murray. Not Andy Murray. Andy I was Murray. Like Adam. <laughs> Andy Murray. I only got there because I was thinking of his mum. Um, I was talking to his mum who I was interviewing Tuesday. last Wednesday. So Andy Murray won, but it, it, for me it kind of didn't count because he's Scottish. And, and that's great for Scotland, but, but an English tennis player. Um, so Raducanu, Tim Henson. No, Tim Henson, yeah, do you remember that? And he, there was a promise of something there and it never came. And I just lost interest because it was like rooting for Spurs around the 90s, you know, nothing ever happened. Um, but, a, but apparently it was just it. such an event. It was, be it yeah. was a beautiful tribute also to 9-11 and apparently both the girls gave fantastic speeches. But I don't know if I know enough about tennis, but Sue Barker was dribbling. Like practically, she was like, she's doing straight sets. See, straight sets doesn't suggest an exciting game to me. <clears throat> well, then she said something else that sounded... Was it tight, guys? Was it tight? What made it... OK, here's the thing. What made it a great game? Was it just her oh, age? It, was it nail-biting it... even... Because when you hear that someone's won in straight, straight sets, set. you tend to she think, oh, it it was, she just smashed her to pieces. But were they very close sets? I'm presuming. We they they were amazing, says Amy May. Amazing for their age. Yeah, 18, weren't they? And the other, was the other one younger? Uh, 19. 19. Uh, it was amazing. Very close. Oh, it was very close, Ellie Picard. Um, oh my God, both girls were excellent. McEnroe's first mistake was to compare her to himself. Oh, God. He didn't. He didn't, did he? he? Didn't. Did he? Did he? Clearly, she's oh. on a whole other level at age 18 than he was. Oh, tons of match points. Oh, okay, Sharon, because that does make a good match. What a belter. We might have to watch it back. I think she so. smashed it, has not lost a set, it's all championships. Sporting history. Oh, there we go, Daniel Smith, breaking each other's serves. And that's it. I mean, as soon as you, you know, there's nothing more boring with... than a tennis match just won. Like Hang on a minute, that. I'm going to press her now. And then she won with an ace. Oh, what's an ace? When you hit it right in the corner. Yeah. Oh, well done. But um, I was reading about her this morning, actually, and she was saying, because her mother is Chinese, her father's Romanian, but she's lived here since she was two. She was actually discovered in Bromley. Really? And Bromley, uh, Bromley Tennis Club, and then the Lawn Tennis Club actually then took her on, and they have carried her through and helped with her training and all wow. of that. So, um, but she was saying, not, not that, that she puts her wind down to her Chinese heritage, um, reading between the lines, her mum sounds like a bit of a proper Chinese mum, you know, who she said she pushed me, she expected a lot. But they're very, very, she's really well looked after by her team. This is what Sue Barker was saying, because of course now what comes next is, how will this affect her? This is going to just be enormous. She's, everybody's going to want her, huge deals. We've seen so many sports stars recently reach out, haven't we, about their mental health and... Um, Shall I stop you there and tell you something? Well, She put it down to her Chinese heritage, winning. Well, a big part of it, because she's... So she's been going quietly over to China every year and having extra training. Right. But because she said she has this self-belief, she said, that's not about just saying, oh, you're great. She truly believes in herself. Mm. And her mum has always really pushed her, you know, academically and within it in every sense and so yeah she just well nanny die who I, I know has, has loved her tennis over the years she, she's got a huge variety of strokes she's incredibly graceful powerful as hell wow. nicely put mum nicely put thanks Di. this forum mum you, your your writing just takes mm -hmm. on a sort of another level but can i just tell you she's misplaced radicano in suggesting that it's her chinese heritage or any hard work or any overcoming or mental talent. health demons or talent no, or dedication none of that got or her commitment wish. no no guess, I'll say, guess, guess what, what? Piers Morgan did. You're not going to believe this, guys. Piers Morgan feels vindicated over Emma Raducanu's criticism as he doubles down after his, her historic US Open win. Um, so when someone said something to him along the lines on Twitter of, you must feel, you know, a bit of a twat or whatever he said, or a bad day, he said, a bad day, I've been totally vindicated. She took my advice and won. Oh, my God, I don't know what to do with myself with this. She took my advice and won. Because, well, explain why. Well, because he completely hammered her when she struggled one of the earlier, earlier matches, earlier tournaments, didn't he? He said that she wimped out, she, she couldn't take the heat, couldn't stand the heat, da, 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 all this kind of stuff. But that's um, what makes me feel, yeah. actually, the fact that she stepped out 
makes me feel really hopeful that she will survive in this industry because she, she must have a good team that say, mm. yep, okay, move you out. Who's the gymnast um, that had to pull out? Oh, oh God, yeah. Biles. Um, yeah. Bile? Was it Bile? Oh, God, they'll know. They're, they always fill in our gaps for us. Um, yeah, and, and, and I, it shows incredible maturity. Simone Biles. Simone thank Biles, you. thank yeah. you. In, incredible athlete. He had a go at her when she pulled out as well, even though she, she was in danger, her life was in danger because she was in such a fog mentally that mm. she could have, you know, really done herself some nasty damage if she hadn't pulled out. But he had a lot of opinions on that as well. But the fact that, that, that she was able to step out in Wimbledon and that her team supported in that, her in that is, is brilliant. Because that means she, you can't have an athlete, like how many times do we talk about this? Your mental health is as important as your physical health. And hopefully, right across the sports world, they're starting to, I think they are, they're taking that more seriously. Because mm. she's obviously a genius. She's obviously gifted. And if she doesn't look after her mental health as well, well, then we'll lose her. There's, like we have so many others. There's obviously a, step out of There's them. obviously a, a big, quite a sizable section of society that feels quite intimidated by the idea of uh, mental health being even a thing. Um, and I think perhaps, you know, there's this, there's this very stiff upper lip idea that this never was a problem in the past. Uh, why is it becoming a problem now? Is it a trend? Is it, is it a certain, is it a snowflake generation? All this stuff is being trotted out. And that presupposes that a society never progresses. Would we all stay at a stayed standard place and our self-awareness and self-knowledge? And it really frustrates me because, mm. you know, I, you know so I can understand much older generations saying, oh, God, you guys, we just got on with it. But actually, it's not about just getting on with it. That might have worked for you. That might be right for you. But just because that works for you, it doesn't mean it has to work for everyone. And given that we live in a time when we know so much more, not just about getting into space and technology, technologically and all that kind of stuff, but we know so much more about ourselves. Why is knowing more about ourselves and knowing why we're feeling certain things? You know, you could argue, for example, that McEnroe was so angry and, and furious on, on, on the courts when he was playing because he couldn't get in touch with his mental health. Well, apparently he wrote her off, it's yeah, only me, because, because, because of her panic attack. No, but that's my point. In the past, you could yeah. argue that mental health issues manifested just in, in, a, in a different way, way yeah. because there wasn't the language or the capacity to talk it about it. It doesn't make me laugh, though. She could say, I've got a twinge in the back of my knee, and everyone would go, for God's sake, put her in a glass box, <laughs> yeah, protect yeah, her. True. But you can't yeah. say, yeah. I'm... I'm worried about what's going on in here. So you see, for example... She's only 18. She's just done her A-levels, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sue says Piers Morgan was being ironic. Not sure why the loose women are so obsessed with him. Well, you know I'm not... What? Hang on. First of all, I am not obsessed with him. I'm not obsessed with him. Being ironic, it's just this general taking the piss yeah. out of any mental health, which I find... I, I think that he must be very unhappy, that's what I think. Well, no, I think, I th I th I think he himself does. We'd all have real compassion for him, actually, if he just admitted he's got clearly got a mental health issue. Um, you know, he's struggling. He's struggling in some way, for Well, sure. you know, he's lost his job. You know, he loved his job. It's not yeah. easy, is it? I suppose he's looking for a place to be heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... Um, Standing he, on the margin, sort of doing um, this. Is how he to enjoys do it. fame and he's lost his fame and he's lost his soapbox. So this will get him. That's yeah. why I don't even really like to talk about him because it gets him where he wants to yeah, be, yeah, which yeah. is being spoken about. Mandy Wilson, I'm with you, Mandy. I used to like Piers. He would really grill the MPs. I agree. There was That's a, why he's so good at Yeah, him. he is great. He's got great skills. He's stopped picking on kids. And I, I didn't mind him when, when he was put, holding, you know, holding the fire to the right people's, you know, feet. But sometimes I just don't think he, you know, I just don't think he needs to talk about some of this other stuff, to be honest with you. Um, I think he should stay away from mental health. Yeah. It's not his... Yeah, Laura his, S, we got your email, don't it, we? It's not his thing, is it? What? Mental health. I, I think... No. I don't think he should really be talking about it. No. I mean, yeah, just... I mean, maybe if you don't get it, just don't talk about it. Um, so, Nadia saw something earlier today about television rotting your brain. This was always something they said when I was a kid. Do you remember? They'd say, if you watch too much telly, your, your eyes will go square. Yeah, we can't find the article now, but there no. was an article in one of the papers today saying that they have now looked at this. They have done MRI scans and you do actually lose your brain. Really? <laughs> so they've actually got proof? More than two and a half hours. 
uh, from the age of about 40 onwards and you're going to start losing brain cells. At, 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 at. Now, it's not just because of the... Because I thought, oh, is this because you're sitting down, which we know isn't good? Because No, because other sedentary activities like crosswords or reading or all yeah. of that doesn't have the same effect. So, right. yeah, you lose your brain. So we just thought, what can you not resist? Yeah, what do you binge watch? What do you binge watch? What do you know if it comes up? You've got, you're going to have to watch the second episode, third episode. Yeah. We, like, ours is um, Shards of Sunset, um, Housewives of Beverly Hills. Yeah, Mark. I mean, it's weird how mine have become yours. I think when something is meatier and, 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 and more Strategy mentally stimulating, then no, I don't like to gorge on it. It feels like, if it's really rich, then I can't overeat on it. But something oh. fluffy, I can just have it on and just be like, eh. So I can literally feel my brain dying as I'm Me watching Me says the No Name Sunday show. If, if you oh. watch too much of that, your brain will die. <laughs> um, Married at First Sight, Dylan Nixon. Yeah. Oh, uh, Rich Coulter, The Farage and Morgan Show. Can you imagine? Oh, God. Uh, Amy May, I don't watch TV very often. I just read a lot. God, well done. Yes. Um, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, I've never watched Grey's oh, Anatomy. I hear so many people talk about Grey's Anatomy. Um, what is it about Grey's Anatomy? Uh, hospital. Oh, right. Uh, I think I've, I, I've had enough of hospital stuff. I, I, casualty kind of did me in on that. Uh, Real Housewives, Joyce Pritchard. Uh, Tweety Pie, I hardly watch TV, to be honest. OK, let, can I ask a couple oh, of questions? Because so I'm just interested. On YouTube. Do you watch... Can you write... Uh, no how, debt, me too, Mandy Nanny. Who watches m more stuff online than on conventional television? Say yes if you watch more online than television. Say yes if you watch more And while more you're doing online. that, can you click the like button just underneath us so you can tell us you like us? And also... Um, Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. You don't need a YouTube account to do that. You can just hit hit those. And, uh, oh, you do need a YouTube account to subscribe, do you? To subscribe and to hit the thumbs up and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, you need a YouTube account. Yeah, you you do. Account. So, yeah, if you've oh, got look. a YouTube account, hit the subscribe I'll button. Oh, look at that. This is, so, the, so the question was, do you watch more online, maybe YouTube, whatever, than TV? I'm not exaggerating. There's not one. There's one note. Oh, Ashley one note. Gardner. Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, you are actually a real stalwart, aren't you? You're a real supporter of the good old conventional telly. I like that. I mean, there's a lot to be said. Reem AW, that's 98%. Shelley Silver, a few exceptions. Wow. The vast majority of you watch um, Go Online. Deb Helen Jones, Ellis Helen doesn't. Ellis. Deb Jones doesn't. You see, the, uh, oh, there's a few more coming through. Josephine Smith, Caroline Turner. I mean... This is the dilemma. Carol Naismith, no. Hi, Carol. Um, this is a real dilemma, isn't it, for the broadcasters, really? Richard Coulter has gone to a new low. He's watched Real Housewives of Cheshire yesterday. Is that any good? Yeah. The Apparently the manager of West Ham, who's 71, not that there's any issue with this, uh, has married one of the Real Housewives from Cheshire. Oh. Well, no, it's just... It the, hold the front well, page. Well, it held the front page in the Daily Star. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know why. Um... But, it, OK, here's another thing. Can I ask you this? For those of you who said, yes, you watch more online than telly, do you watch your online on a big telly? <laughs> this is getting weirder by the minute. Yeah. If people are watching online content, then it's very much about the content it's rather than the clear, format. Is it? It's not the same. Who watches their online content, ten, oh, content on a telly? Smart TV. Oh, OK, no, no, a lot of you are on your phones. Oh, half and half. 150 inch. Who's got a 150 inch projection? Me, Tube. I don't know why MeTube. I, I can't have, imagine that MeTube. I have visions of you, MeTube, in a room with hundreds of screens. I don't know. I think it's because of your name. Teresa Dunn watches it on Chromecast. What's that? Is that Chrome, like the, the search engine? Ali Watts on TV and iPad. Laptop. Yeah, my phone. Yeah. The thing about watching things online, says Erin, Julie is Evans that you can watching choose... watching us now on a big TV. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Uh, is that you can choose what you want to sorry, watch Julie. whenever you want, but with TV, you kind of have to settle watching whatever is on. I'm going to say I have tried, because I wanted to do it for nostalgia, to just watch television. Every time I've gone it to it, there's feel. fuck all on. Yeah. I want to watch. But I suppose, Ashley, would, Ashley, do you target things in the schedules and make sure you're there for Do you it? circle in the, beep, in the Radio Times? I used to love that one. I tell you something I used to do when I was a student. I used to circle the old film, you know, the films that I wanted to watch and record them on VHS. I'd right. set a timer on my VHS. Leslie Ann Mallon is obsessed with people's Instagram stories. Now, hours can be lost doing that, doesn't it? Do they make you feel better? 
What? Or do they? Well, I think a lot of people, when you watch a lot of stories, it can end up making you feel like, oh, God, because everybody puts on their stories like perfect life, don't they? Here's two. Anne Henderson, I love loose women on my TV, especially when Nadia's on. Oh, thank oh. you, Anne. Uh, Rhys Roberts, <laughs> watching you guys on a 49-inch smart TV with surround sound. No! Oh. No. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> That's quite something. Um, so, what what do you watch? What do you bin Is there a particular program? Re binge watching. Sophie R. Are you all planning on watching and reviewing Vigil? The audience figures for it are unbelievable. Sophie R. You are right. Vigil. Oh, is this the one on the submarine? Yes. Yeah, we watched, we the, watched first the first one. episode, and it was okay. We. we it felt a bit, can I be honest, it just felt like they were trying really hard to take a to detective confuses. procedural and putting it under the water. It wasn't that I didn't like it. Yeah. It's just that it didn't drag me in. We just didn't in. talk about it, we, did we? We didn't even acknowledge we were in the same room. It was No, weird. when we got to the end of it, I think we just made a cup of tea. No, we were like ships that passed in the night. Oh, Mark. Um, but I, can someone help me out here, though? Sophia, do you know? No, Eddie Picard wanted us to say we liked it. Well, we did. Well, we didn't dislike it. No. What? We didn't dislike no, it. No, we didn't dislike it. It like, gets better. Someone says it gets better. Oh, oh, Zoe says it's awful. Um, Vigil is brilliant, says Wendy. Okay, yeah. well, I'm, I'm going to watch the second one. I'm going to watch the second yeah. one to Let's see. Let's watch if, the second one yeah. and then see how we go. Sean Thomas. Just, just because Ellie was so upset that we didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I think we need to watch no, the second absolutely. one for Ellie. But we didn't dislike it but it no. didn't absolutely tug me no if you know it didn't me. grab us by the balls and throw or, us around the room or tug me <laughs> <laughs> but can i ask does anyone know when the stephen graham jodie comer drama's on is it tonight is it tonight i'm dreading that a bit i'm not it's gonna be a no only because it's gonna be so is it called sad. hell apparently judy jodie comer was in bits in tears when she was researching and working care homes really yeah it's oh, going to be grueling. On Thursday. it's going to be a really grueling watch claire hemming are you watching nine perfect strangers we are. now i'm pleased you asked that we are and there's a lot we like about it why aren't we reviewing that i thought you didn't want to i thought it was very much well, i, I thought we were watching well let's review the whole series uh we'll do the series well yeah but then people want to know what they think of it so they can watch it well let's review it to how far we've got <laughs> I don't know. I'm throwing things into the fucking pile here. I don't know. <laughs> what a radical idea. Oh, God. I'm not finding life easy today. Mm. I'm having to work it quite hard. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're back. Um... Yeah, we're gonna. Re we've seen four episodes. I think there are what, only four what episodes. What are we gonna do about it? Uh, I think your your idea was brilliant. <laughs> Review them so far. <laughs> I bring my genius to the table on a daily basis. I think sometimes you have such blue sky thinking it frightens me. Have you watched the BBC series called Ghosts? It's brilliant. Ah, Sophie R. I've been meaning to ask for ages if you both finish The White Lotus. Sophie R. We're, we're the, the bearers of bad news here. Which one's The White Lotus? Set in the hotel on Hawaii. Oh! We hated it! And, and it's a huge hit. It's a huge hit. I so mean, we, we, we hated it. We accept that it. there's something to do with us. It was weird the way we both hated it. We were so looking forward to it. Yeah. And I know most people love it. We don't know what's wrong with us. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with us because there's so much about it I could feel I wanted to like. Like, for example, I like the manager of the hotel. I thought he was great. Um, but something in it just held us back. Tell us what we're missing. Tell us what we're missing because I just couldn't, I couldn't get to grips mm -hmm. with it. I didn't quite understand what it was. Gainer Hills, what a pile of rubbish. Ellery Jones, White Lotus. I know, it, it, it was odd. You're right, it was odd. And I like oddness. Debbie's just said that I don't think Nine Perfect Strangers is worth reviewing. Oh, really? Diane? Diane. Oh, oh, Nanny Diane. Died. Died. <laughs> oh, I was about to say Diane Adley. Guys, Nine Perfect Strangers is not worth reviewing, in my opinion, but then I like Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs> I tell you what, Mum, why don't you do a review of Homes Under the Hammer? That would be good. Uh, if you want odd, check out my film review of Pig. Doesn't get much crazier than that. Oh, Life Under Attack. Oh, we want to watch that. Aaron, yeah, 9-11, Life Under Attack. Of course, 
it's going to be very skewed because George yeah. is the... So, Amy May, you're right. Everybody's talking about Jamie is coming out on Friday. A feel-good movie couldn't be sort of more guaranteed than oh, that. Oh, you're going to go see that. Uh, with an added sort of, you know, sort of sadness, given that obviously it's Richard E. Oh, Grant. Richard White Richard Lotus Grant's in it. Too. Now, everybody's talking about Jamie as one of those films that a lot of po-faced reviewers at the Venice Film Festival, or was it Toronto, uh, gave it such a terrible write-up. Um, and so it's had really negative reviews. So I think, you know, I think, I think sometimes reviewers get the wrong end of the stick with the They're types of films. They probably don't understand what, Yeah, what and also is. I think you've got to adjust it. Sometimes we do reviews of, say, horror films, and we might give them a really high score, not because they're the best film ever made, but because they're a good horror film. Mm. My chest is exploding. Guys, I've got to go. I've got to oh, go hang on, and make we've got this a quick, pasta. A quick birthday. Hit Sarah the like Dulali. button. We're not even at two hundred. Come on, there's seven hundred of you watching. Hit the like button just underneath. But many of them won't be able to hit the like Happy button. Happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, dear Sarah Dulali. Happy birthday to you. Sarah Dulali, do people ever say you've gone Dulali? Yeah, I bet they do all the time. I bet they do all the time. I love that word, Dulali. And if anyone has, has already got oh, that... Oh, thank you. 224. Can we do, do swapsies? Swapsies? Love you. Love you, guys. Don't forget the No Name Stay Sunday safe. show. Yeah, it's coming.